Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Power episode of Iron Panther Presents. I'm wearing my Power shirt. Ta -da. Anyway, uh, brought to you by my wife. Anyway, I, I digress. Uh, we're going to talk about season three, episode seven of book one. Um, get into the Milan saga as Dean has revealed himself. Um, shit getting real for, for, for Ghost and, and, and Tommy. Um, what do you think of this episode, Stacey? Uh, two words. Product placement. <laughs> Way Dre trotted out that effing vodka box. Make sure it's pointed directly at the camera. For no damn reason. <laughs> Besides, 50 Cent said, sell my vodka. <laughs> That's probably why he leaked the episodes of the of the last season, because uh, Courtney stopped like promoting his shit, and he was like, fuck this show. I'm going to leak these episodes. Yeah, he did it. Anyway, it's funny you bring up Dre. I forgot why Tommy was like, fuck you, Dre. I forgot. Season two, season finale, it was Dre that pulled the gun on Tommy as he, as, as, uh, as he was stepping up the ghost. Bitch, you got a new bitch already? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that's what Tommy was really mad about. <laughs> like, you replaced me already? Yeah, man. I got me a light skin version. <laughs> Tony Tiger, look at this. <laughs> I love that. Oh, man. Oh, man. He just wrote that. <laughs> I work with that Tiger. <laughs> Tony Tiger looking motherfucker. <laughs> and that's true because Dre becomes an absolute beast as the, as, as the show goes on. Like, he should have actually kept to his own advice later on. He's actually the new Julio. He's not the new Tommy. Because and then Julio brings that up when they meet. Like, oh, Dre, uh, a ghost brought you up out of the streets too? Uh, yes, because I got a daughter. Yeah. That being said, we never we never got into the Julio backstory. Like, what what kind of shit was he in specifically? You know, how many long, a long ago was that? Why did Ghost raise him out of this dangerous situation he was in? You know, what did he see in him? I, we never actually got into before he was murdered. Say like he had a god complex. He want to create little hymns, so he find these dudes and like try to groom them to be like his little what Tariq wanted to be, I guess. I guess. Maybe. Um, I thought so. Real quick, I, I want to do Milan. So, um, Ghost. So Ghost and Ghost is trying to tell Tommy, hey, you know this Milan thing is for real, for real. I again, Tommy really believed that Ghost was gonna kill Angie that night. It was like, what happened? Is she still alive? Of course she's still alive. Like, just because you kill your woman for me does it not mean I'm going to kill my woman for you. Like, that's not how that works. No. Um, Milan picks, picks up his, his two new drug dealers in a stretched limo. Milan is balling now. Like, I'm like what, what, when did this become a thing? And then somehow, he probably Julio, bought it with Jamie's money. <laughs> he should have asked the question. Top Ghost should have been like, "Where the fuck you buy this? Oh, oh, this is your paycheck. You didn't know that." <laughs> not once, not once. When Tom, when as, as um, when Milan is giving Ghost's entire life, I know where you work. I know how you make your money. I know how you distribute your drugs. Not once did Ghost go. How the fuck do you know all this? For Milan to be like, you paid me to learn it. Did you not? <laughs> From the Google. Oh, if what? From the Google. From the Google. Yeah, Tom was like, he Googled the shit at you. He's like, what about me? He's like, you are simple. <laughs> I'm he found, simple. He found your Twitter and then down that's, here from there. That's, then your that's LinkedIn. He got your Twitter. He found your LinkedIn. He found your Facebook. <laughs> I got you. I got you on my MySpace. I got you on the MySpace. That's what he should have said. Was, <laughs> oh shit! In '97, oh, yeah. the rap group was on MySpace. That should have been the standard. That should have been the stand, right? 16, 17, 18 years old in the in the late '90s. You you go into you got a MySpace at some point. Like at some point, you get in that MySpace shit, right? No, oh, no, no. Wait, wait. That's too, that's too soon. It's too soon. Too soon. MySpace was like early 2000s. Yeah. Oh, it's Dallas. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's too far. Um, but he should have said, I tracked you on the Twitter. That would have been hilarious. Uh, you paid me one. I've been tracking your whole life. Remember that? You paid me for weeks, for weeks to track you and your family, which surprised me that Tasha was like, who the fuck is this guy? I'm like, 
this is the head security dude that's been protecting you and your family, right? Like, she's like, I don't know who this motherfucker is. I'm like, who? He just showed up to the house and said, we have a dinner. I was like, what? And, that, and what type of queen pen wife just lets random people, oh, well, we're here for dinner. Oh, okay, come right on in. For my ex-husband, my soon-to-be ex-husband, this is not even your man who lives in your house. Like, you should be like, go to, to Angie's bitch house. Like, that's where he's at. Don't bring that shit here, because we ain't family. <laughs> I'm like, how, how did, you're absolutely right. This ain't season one where they still are somewhat a couple. You know, like, he's knee-deep in Angie. Well, he ain't got a place to live now, because, you know, he had to leave for her protection. Um... Anyway, did you see the pool? Did you see the pool that they had up there? I was like, black folks don't swim? What you doing with this pool up here? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We swim. We, swim. Um, we never saw that pool again, did we? No. One, it's always shot in the winter. So that's why the pool was covered in the first place, right? Like, they never did any summer episodes of Power. It was always winter. That's why. But that would have been interesting if, if Terry Felice would have mentioned, you know, like, hey, I can't wait for my friends to come over this summer so we can show you the pool or something like that. Like, I was like, where'd the pool come from? Y'all balling out. <laughs> this is why it's hard for us to say Tariq is from the big rich town, but he comes from the poorest part. No, he doesn't. He is quite privileged <laughs> and taken care of. Let's let's get into Tariq. We don't have a door. We have an elevator. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about doors and shit? I, what? <laughs> I mean, poor people have doors. <laughs> <laughs> doors are for broke ass people. <laughs> As I go to my private school, excuse me. Um, the renting. Yeah, that's that's that that's that hood life. That is that hood life, though. Like you need to start buying ghosts before you start buying clubs and going international. How about you pay mortgage? How about how about you like actually own the shit that you live in? Ghost build some equity, equity into your own home. He could have used that to leverage that to buy the clubs. You know what I'm saying? Like like get your shit together, ghost. Um, but let's talk about Tariq. He took a very hard turn this episode. Um, so I don't, he didn't put hands on Tasha. He defended himself and Tasha tried to be big mama and was like, let me slap you the way my mama slapped me. And Tariq was like, absolutely not. <laughs> Cause I'm fast and I got hands. Um, you see how much taller I just noticed how like last season he was kind of like her height and now he's like this. It's amazing how these child actors just grow exponentially, like every season, especially from the pilot, like the first season to the second season, they be big as fuck. I was like, how did that possible? Um, so let's talk about Ghost's parenting style. The few times he's actually made an effort to be a parent, um, he tries to calmly, after Tasha claims that Tariq almost beat her ass, which is it's a bit much, okay, again, but you need to talk some sense, sense to your son. He's like, son, Tariq, I, we talked about this, right? You don't put your hands on your mama for no reason. You know, let's let's work through this. You need to apologize. Oh, like I did to your side, bitch? What the fuck did you, like, please note the level of reaction. Tariq has been consistently shitting on Tasha because as, as, he's upset about his dad leaving. He's constantly, and Ghost has always been like, calm down. He's just getting used to the situation. What's the big deal? okay. But last episode is the first time we saw a ghost cry. Why? Because of Angie. This is the first time we see ghosts almost whoop the shit out of his son. Why? Because of Angie. He don't give a fuck about Tasha. Like, that's just real. Until he finds out Silver's fucking her. And then he's like, no man wants another man fucking his woman. Even if he's cheating on her. Like, that's, it's, it's not, it, it doesn't matter. Like, one doesn't equal the other. Like, hey, hey, hey black men don't cheat though. All right, that's that's what we need to see. Now, now we're about to switch subjects real quick. <laughs> I need Derek Jackson's wife to come out with her set of mistresses in the bonnet. I need a video of her getting banged from the back while she's holding the bonnet on her head. Hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Like Terry explained, it wasn't a bonnet. It was some other type of cloth hat or some a shit. Beret or something. Yeah, Terry, she, she went into it. I was like, babe, why, why are we even having this conversation? Like, this is not even the point of what we're trying to talk about. She was like, David, that's not even a real bonnet. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I want his <laughs> wife to be like, I too hadn't found the Lord yet. That's why I was getting it in with these dudes. But now I found the Lord, right? So we're okay with that, right? Like, we're going to move together in Christ, right? No, he will be, they'll be divorced that day. The next video will be like, I'm leaving my wife 
and she was holding around. And I just can't, I just can't deal with it. I just, which is exactly what Ghost did. My whole point of this is that Ghost is a piece of shit because when he finds out that that Tasha was even with Sean, he shits on her. Turns it wasn't on, Sean's fault. It was her fault. Which is kind of true because he was a child. But mm. then when he finds out about Silver, Tasha is a dirty hoe. But Tasha still has his back. Tasha's the one that gives him an alibi with Angie. You know what I'm saying? Tasha is the is the one. I, what what she do this? Oh wait a minute, something about the business. Then she she, she don't want to give him the money though. She was like, you ain't fucking up the money. I, 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 I that that's true because she's worried about her kids. Note that she wrote a che- a legitimate money check to Tommy, showing she's still in like responsible for the money situation. So she's still involved in the business. But when she stepped up to Angie, it was like mistress privilege. I want I want I, I, I want to talk about that. For Angie to have the, the the audacity to be upset that Ghost may have actually had sex with his own wife, hilarious. But he get she he gave her separation papers, and you know separation means marriage is done until you go back. Until Pa says, were they signed? No. As you said, Angie's a bird. I think that's how you put it last, last, last video. She's smart when necessary, and she's dumb as fuck when necessary. Like, it's whatever the plot needs to get this story moving from point A to point B. But Pa's is always there with that, with that hater, but good good advice. I was like, what? I want to know Pa's back. So what man fucked her over? Like, was, was that her? What she said. She said his name once. Junior's oh. daddy. She's like, yeah, I remember when me and so and so used to go to hotels and do. That's right. It was so hot. <laughs> she wanted. She wanted to fuck Tim when he showed up. When he was like Angie, plot convenience, plot convenience. So as much as Paz hates Ghost and doesn't want him, her to, him to have anything to do with his sister or his, or her sister's life, to the point she says, "I will kill you with my bare hands if you come to my back to my see my sister." Right. It's interesting that plot was necessary for her to say, and hey, you know, she got carried away by something to do with work today. I mean, they're questioning her that she was involved. Why the fuck would she tell Ghost that? So he can go to her and confront her about this later. It's like, it's like, come on, writers. You are slowly, Courtney, at this point, plot convenience is starting to exceed logic. Like it's, it's starting to get there. Like we, there's certain things we need to get to. So fuck the fact that this makes no sense whatsoever i was like stop where where is keisha actually she's doing weeds oh my yeah i was like yeah i was like i noticed that i forgot like where why has she been around to help tasha do these hard times what's she gonna do i don't know oh well she could um, huh she gonna do bar a purse yeah so like, baby can i get some more purse because since you balling like that and i don't mm-hmm. help me out I'm about to say clothes, but they are nowhere near the same size. So. Absolutely not. Especially <laughs> once uh, Keisha got that ass uh, taken care of. Um, anyway, in the world, they can share clothes. Um, so, uh, what else we got? So, anyway, I was I was a little bit confused how Julio, who who was not allowed to get into the stretch SUV when Milan picked up Ghost and Tommy, he wasn't allowed to get in, but somehow he was at the the, the drug spot already in zip ties. By the time they got there, I was like, "How the fuck did he do that?" Like, maybe a stretch limo just takes longer to get places, I guess, because it's not practical, especially not for New York. You know, there's a few of them in New York I've seen. I'm like, "How did plot convenience? They needed Julio to be there, but it didn't make a lot of sense." But Tommy said, "He said, hey, you don't don't worry about what we're doing here. Go to the spot, check out the new new product, and that's what he did." But somehow, again, Milan had complete control and dominance over everything. Business on lock. He just killed the man in front of the, in, front, in front of Ghost and Tommy with no hesitation. And Ghost is like, "Oh fuck!" Like Tommy, do you fully appreciate what we're dealing with right now? Like this is this is nothing to be fucked with. But Tommy is all fucked up in the head right now. What did he have to do for dinner? See, that's another thing. It really, I was really disappointed that he never ate anyone. That we know. Huh? 
that we know of. But they, I mean, but that's my point. Like they should have highlighted it. They, I mean, as much because as much as Tommy was like, "Don't worry, we'll probably be chunks in Milan shit before Angie gets the time to arrest us." <laughs> So with that, with the guy that he just broke, choked him out and broke his neck in front of these two dudes, later on he should have been eating something, and be, and being like, oh that this is the, like this is the guy this like it, it should have been referenced. It should have been referenced. They really show how bad he was, and as we said in other videos, he by far should have been the last big bad that they had to deal with, um, because uh because out oh, this dude he was he was just awesome, um. But this is not so. My favorite favorite episode will be the one where next wherever Milan kills the Asian Korean drug dealer in Ghost's Club. I think that's next week. I think um, it has to be because they're, they're they're running out of time. Like you know they they got heard this shit up. Ghost has to go to jail soon for no reason. Um, the investigation into uh, who helped kill Lobos into in the on uh, the district attorney's office. I thought it was interesting that the investigators never discovered that Mike Sandoval called in a trap and trace on on um, yeah. Lobos's burner phone last episode. Remember that? Because he was worried about it. He was like, oh shit, like what do I do? Like, is it like that never ever came up? Like that should have been something to point the finger towards him around the end, you know, when they, they you know they discover he's the real villain or whatever, whatever. But it's interesting mm -hmm. that that never that never came up to be anything. I, I, th I thought that would have been something. What was in Sax's file? Some R. Kelly type stuff. I, I thought right. I was like, it was something. It's like, oh, we, we ain't got no, we can't, we got no room for all the shit you into. I'm like, what is Sax into? I mean, the, so. Well, we saw him. Lesbian porn, right? Yeah, but that's not enough. I was about to say that the one time we saw him maybe doing something inappropriate, he was in his own house watching adult consensual porn, you know, saying two girls, you know, together, which is not that uncommon, you know, saying doing what you know people do with porn, I guess. But I'm like, that's all of a sudden in your file. I mean, I don't, if he did it at work, if he got caught a couple of times at work, <laughs> that would have been something. I don't think brother's always watching, maybe the uh. The internet service is government sponsored. <laughs> well, I, I, government computers there are so like yeah, all that shit's monitored. So that would have been so it, it probably could have been like too many times we catch you looking at big boob lovers, you know, what I'm saying at, in, in the middle of the night at work or something. Um, so anyway, I, I, I just I just thought I said, we never we never no, never thing we we mentioned the fact that we never found out what Milan wanted to tell Ghost about Karen Bassett, right? Mm -hmm. I think what it was, even though the writers never got around to it. Was that they were broke the company was actually going under like they didn't have the money you remember when dad was like no we need that money like yeah. now right yeah. and karen was like you know ghost the fact you get the money so fast is why we're so interested in you i'm like they were probably broke as fuck and milan would have been like this is not the business to get into like these, these guys ain't got their shit together as much as they talk, act like they do but then afterwards after he took ghost money he was still like get karen bassett the money so we can close the deal so hmm. he wanted access to the international clubs. It wasn't, I mean, you know what I'm saying? But like, and, but I mean, I, I guess was, he was, and it, that constantly becomes a thing from now on. This whole, the club thing is how we get drugs from point A to point B. But I mean, Ghost has been pushing drugs for quite a while without fucking around with his own club. So I think before they were doing cocaine, now they're doing like pills and all that stuff. So maybe it's a different distribution avenue. I don't know. But Milan himself is international. Like it's not. It's not like he's a local, you know, American something who's trying to get into the European market or some bullshit. Like he comes from Europe, comes to America. So I'm like, you're already international. You got millions of dollars. I would imagine. Open up your own shit. Like Lobos was local, right? Lobo was Mexico working in America, right? So if Lobos was like, hey, I'm trying to get to that European shit, and now I can do it through the clubs, that would have made sense. At least I don't know. Anyway. Um, but yeah, but I mean, Milan was not playing around. He wasn't asking questions. He was giving commands. Um, and that's probably, again, that's probably because Ghost has been shitting on him all this time. Ghost is really good at that. Right. He even did, he even did it to Dre when Dre, when, uh, when uh, Karen was like, hey, we, we can put Dre up front. He was like, nah, nah, nah. Let little boy sit over here doing little boy shit. Like this, this is my business. Mm -hmm. um, which is why eventually Dre and everybody else turns on Ghost. Um, because including Tommy at by the end of the season, actually. 
Um, because Ghost just keeps on lying. And he the only person he gives a fuck about is his, is himself. Mm-hmm. I mean, really. Um, I thought I thought that was cool. Um and, and so then go Angie trying to confront Ghost about the, who helped you, and he's checking her for a wire. And I'm like, she ain't really fighting. Like she kind of fighting, but she ain't really fighting, you know. I was like, what, what are we doing right now? This, you know, you want you, just take your clothes off, girl. Why, why are we playing around? You, you could have had this conversation over the phone, but you were like, I need to go see this man yes. one more time. Same way she had that, uh, she returned that necklace. Like, I had to bring you your necklace back so you can screw me against the wall. <laughs> she should have brought the shoe. She should have brought the shoe. That would have been it. I just came to give you your shoe, ghost. Ghost. See, that's, what, that's what she should have started that shit. Look here, ghost. I know who you are. She never wanted to admit it to herself, though. Mm. She didn't want to fuck that bad boy, though. I always get you in trouble, ladies. That's not, it's not, men too. Men too. We do that dumb shit. Mm-hmm. My, <laughs> never mind. You gotta go on a, the apology tour. <laughs> well, that's just cheating in general. But just the fact when you pick someone who ain't good for you, but they good to you, but not good for you. Um, I was like, yeah, it's not always the same thing. Just because they make your life exciting. Could be the same reason why you, you're visiting them in prison or somehow your stuff gets stolen or the cops come to your house. Like these are all signs or you're broke as fuck. Cause they got, cause like a man just trying to raise up a good woman that's, that's good to him. But it's like, she ain't got her shit together or the other way around. Excuse me. Or he ruins your credit. <laughs> or he ruins your credit. That's a thing. That's a thing. Um, so so with the investigation, it was interesting that uh, the lead woman investigator uh, that was working with White Donovan, not Black Donovan, uh, and that joke will come later, um, actually just somehow told Angie, another woman in the professional environment, that you need to hurry up and get promoted while you're still fuckable. Because once you turn 40, that's it. Like, your, you know, your professionalism doesn't matter. I thought that was a, that's a lot. That's a lot of baggage that maybe one of these, some of these writers are going through right now. Because it's probably a thing. In certain industries, it's probably a thing. I imagine a lot of industries is probably a thing, but it's just interesting that a woman would tell a double, like, oh, girl, you still look good. You're still under 40. Like, you get your ass on a bench before, that's what you get your ass on the bench before you turn into a pumpkin. I was like, damn, that's, that's rough. If it's true, then it's true. I was oh, like, damn, God. girl. He said, use what you got to get what you, what you need, where you want to be. I was like, man, like Angie is a professional. Yes. She, and then even she was like, I use my special set of skills to manipulate my man into tracking a drug dealer. Back up. Why is your man so involved in the drug activity that you could use him to track an international drug dealer? Angie, are you are you admitting that you are fucking a drug dealer? Uh, uh no, I'm just saying that my He's a coach on there. <laughs> He just happens to know a, an international drug supplier named. Well, uh, just having to grow up in the same household as a crackhead and a known drug dealer. I'm like, what is happening right now? Like, do you fully appreciate? Like, I thought this was like some like like investigative mind trick to be like when they when they tricked the the, the, the you know the, the suspect into admitting the crime. She's like, you know, you couldn't do it. You know, you ain't shit. What do you mean I ain't shit? Of course I killed her behind this behind the store with the knife. Ha <laughs> ha. You're right. You got me. You're under arrest. Have a nice day. <laughs> but she's like, I dare you to prove that all the crimes I committed with my obvious drug dealer boyfriend is means I'm trying to let Lobos live and I killed him. No, I put him in jail. Manipulating my drug dealer boyfriend. Uh, joke on you. Exactly. And now she's like, we gotta look into James St. Patrick. He might be a drug dealer. Like, Yes, <laughs> like, absolutely. Uh, so let, let's get into that. Um, and then later on, Ghost is like telling Paz when Paz is like, get your shit and get out. I'm like, hater. This is where she should have said, I remember when I was in the neighborhood, Ghost and Tommy used to sell drugs even after you left. They ran with this guy named Kanan and Breeze. Everybody knew them in the neighborhood. This would have been a good opportunity for that conversation. Mm-hmm. But no, 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 no. We still got half plot holes that we can fill later. Uh, I, I'm like, this, this, I said, like, come on, man. I was, I was, I was a little disappointed. Uh, Tommy, 
Tasha not minding her damn business. Plot convenience. She's like, hey, Tommy, why'd you do that to Holly? What the fuck is that? You don't even know where Holly's even at or what even happened to her. She could be on vacation right now. Why'd you do that to Holly? I know what you did. I was like, oh, <gasps> ghost talk? What? <laughs> I mean, we murdered a lot of people, but ghost would just give up my business like that? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm disappointed. Uh, I'm, ghost I'm snitching? Come on now. You know, ghost snitching? That's what ghosts do. Even Kanan was like, that sounds like ghost. <laughs> when Dre was like, he has me calling in tips to the cops. Yeah, he's he, that's his thing. That's his thing. Um. Anyway, sad Tommy finds out that, you know, Holly was pregnant um, after murdering her. So then he's been on a very self-destructive path um, at, uh, at this point. Uh, he goes to, the, to her grave site um, and starts talking about the cinnamon spaghetti, right? He's like, oh, that shit was terrible. It's it sounds <laughs> terrible. It sounds terrible. Tasha said she's probably halfway to Ohio what? How did Tasha know about Ohio? Maybe on that long ride where she was acting like a Jamaican nanny, they were having like deep, intimate conversations. Yeah, probably you know not. my uncle raised me when I was twelve. Yeah, I was like, yeah. they, they had. It was one of those rides. I was like, what? I was like, how'd you? It's only only in retrospect do you realize how important that line was. But it's like. How did you even know about Ohio? Like, why would she go back to Ohio? Anyway, so I thought, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, Tommy, once again, proving he's the best actor in this series, um, is fighting his way as he's getting his ass whooped by, by Milan's people until they're like, kill him. And he's like, you know what? Yeah, you know, I, I'm ready to die. I was like, that's good acting. And then Milan is like, you want to die. This is the best time to be alive. I see, I, I see potential in you. Milan never lied to Tommy. I, I I feel like I mean the real the the real irony in this shit is Milan was more honest with Tommy than Ghost was, but in the end, Tommy chose Ghost. I mean, Tommy, Milan said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's talk about uh niggers." Um, this is the sec. If you watch, I didn't. Really, you have to watch it with subtitles, I guess. But Milan told Tommy to either to stop working and then kill the priest because he was selling weapons for the nigger Albanians. And I was like, whoa, 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 what? I was like, uh, that, that's a that's a lot, which I didn't know since I saw subtitles. I was like, why we got all these non-black people saying the N-word pretty strong? I was like, mm. Lobos, Tommy, and now Milan. Like and uh, that Korean dude did too, didn't he? That's right, four. That's right. That's right. You do business with niggers. Um what? Uh, I feel like Ruiz was hmm. no no not Ruiz, not Ruiz, not really that. Well, because he said he's no Lobo said to him, or he was like, he was like, you know, I do business with niggers. I don't care who your mama fucks, but because you know he's a Mexican, you know, um, versus Dominican, Puerto Ricans, I don't know. Um, so I was like. I was like, that's a, I was like, this is, this is a bit much, you know, let's, let's, let's calm that down. Um, but anyway, uh, Milan knew that Tommy wasn't going to listen. So he was like, we have to kill this dude eventually. And he had no problems with it, but he saw, he saw the death potential in Tommy. It was like, that's the kind of man I want on my team. It would have worked out. White. Huh? Plus it's white. That's that white privilege. <laughs> is that yeah. what it was? Bring him over here with us. He fits the color scheme. It's like, he but then anyway, plot convenience. We'll, we'll talk about how he all, all of a sudden raises Tommy up, you know, to be like, you're the best thing I've ever seen. Like, you, you're going to leave my organization after me. Like, you just met this dude. I'm like, plot convenience. It's it, funny how Lobos kind of hated Tommy, but then Milan was like, yeah, we can, we can use him. That's true. He said, Vladimir said you were simple or yeah. something. Yeah, but he liked you. But you're not, you're not simple. You know, <laughs> Vladimir wasn't that most complicated drug dealer either. I mean, come on now. Putting rats on a dude's head because they th drew a picture on a wall. And he's like, it must have been the Albanians. I was like, I was like, what? and whatever happened to that? Like, why didn't why didn't they leverage the Albanians when they took down Milan? That would have been something. Last season, he's the last villain. 
season six to get rid of Milan. They're like, we can't do this by ourselves. We need to bring in some help. They bring in the Albanians and like just wipe out all the Serbians. That would have been boss. Yeah, like us niggas got to stay together. So right. you got to come with us. <laughs> Oh shit, that would have been perfect. That would have been absolutely perfect. Oh man, I, I, I would have, I would have loved it. Uh, I, 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 but no, no, no. We had, we had different. We had to have a shootout between Dre's unnamed crew that came out of nowhere, fighting Jason's leftovers, and then all of a sudden they just both conveniently killed, so we can move on to killing Dre and get, and get rid of this shit. Tatiana, they make a big deal out of Tatiana. We never see her when she gets hired. Like they should have showed that. So you could see like, not, not you know, say not she has to be prominent, but like maybe Dominique hires her. Maybe that'll be the last time we see Dominique cause she's gone now, I guess. But like Dominique could have hired her. We see her like we see Holly. She's there, but she's not there. So when she goes missing and then somehow Milan knew that Ghost would break into her apartment to try to find her. So he put blood all over the place just in case. I just put a little spray, spray, a little blood and crack all over the place just in case somebody comes looking. And then you're having dinner. I was like, and then, and then who is she? I mean, why is she so important? But then anyway, my old, my, I want to bring up the dinner scene because you know who wasn't at this family dinner? <laughs> oh yeah. No one gives a fuck about this little girl. Like you're having family dinner in the middle of the week, I would imagine. Where the fuck is your daughter? Why don't you bring her out to be like, hey, baby, we're about to have dinner. Yaz is sleeping. Something. Something. At least Raina was there. That's a step up. At least Raina was there. I was like, oh shit, they actually acknowledging that Raina exists. I was like, all right, oh, all right. That's why is Raina not going to counseling? Not because she committed like crimes in school, but it's like her daddy's not there. Like this has to be impacting her. Mm -hmm. Something. Oh man. I'm saying Courtney Kemp, like you put no effort into Raina. I guess like we're gonna kill her off anyway. Fuck it. Like we, 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 it, it doesn't matter. Like as long as she's alive to die, it's cool. Um. Oh man, just bad. Kanan's on that. I want to wrap up with Kanan. Kanan's still on that ling. I mean, he, he hasn't let that bottle go. Um, I would imagine he's in excruciating pain um, um, uh, because he got third degree burns. It looks like he's all fucked up. I like love David Harrington. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tyler Perry don't understand medical uh, treatments, uh, but it, it's fine. Uh, they, this, these guys do. I love when he ran up on Dre. I love, he's like, I'll call you. I'll call you. Like, it's it's okay. Like, you got to get out of here. There's cameras. Ain't no cameras because nobody sees what's going on in the back of that club. No. No. Uh, but uh, he was like, no, it's okay, man. Like, I got this. So that was cool. Canaan kills an old woman with a pillow that says Jesus saves. Book three needs to explain how he gets to that level of just selfless violence like just like like merciless violence he just does not care he's he's talking to dre he's like hold up kills this poor woman and then it's like so uh don't worry about it man i got all things worked out for ghost i'm going about to give him a history lesson what did he do with her buddy why did no one come looking for her nobody she was old and we forget about old folks i mean she ain't got no old friends she ain't got no, i mean no no relatives nothing I don't, I don't know. Like what? You're right. What? Never. You never see her body again. Also, so this is a conversation I've been having with the commenters. What happened to who? Between this is Breeze's apartment. Oh dear. I'm just. Who? What happened first? Did Breeze die first, or did Kanan go to jail first? Which one happened? Some people say, and I, I read in the comments, guys. I know you're gonna get me with this. All right. You say that. Kanan, Breeze, di Breeze died first, then Kanan went to jail. I say Breeze died first, they got Breeze out the way, and then they got Kanan out the way. So Ta I say Ghost worked with Tasha. Ghost, ah, fuck, hold up. Ghost, first, Ghost worked with Tasha to get Kanan out the way. When Kanan went to jail, 
Then Ghost worked with Tommy to kill Breeze. So then once Breeze was out the way, they held the business. I feel this is justified because in season one, talking about Drift, not Drifty, uh, what's his name? Ghost's mentor, uh, mentee that he killed. Discussing the, uh, why Rolla, when they thought Rolla was the villain trying to attack their network from the inside, Ghost asked Tommy, why would Rolla do it? And then Tommy spoke about them. They're like, same reason two, two corner boys shot Breeze in the face. Because when you want that top spot, there's nothing you won't do to get it, right? This implies to me that killing Breeze put them two in charge. So the question is, where was Kanan? So to me, Kanan would have to be in jail so then therefore they could kill Breeze. Now, the other idea is that Kanan, that Kanan maybe somehow sent Ghost and Tommy to kill Breeze so them three could be in charge and then Ghost and Tasha sent Kanan to jail. Because later on, he tells... He tells a uh, jukebox that he's like, I was in charge, me. And then I went to jail and then they took over. Something like that. So Kanan did nine years in prison, right? Yes. Okay. And Ghost Kill Breeze at 16. So you have to say that Ghost was 34, 30, so that. The numbers could work. Well, no, uh, all right, all right. So it's it, it's it's possible. It's possible. There, there's no exact date. There's no exact time. My, so anyway, this episode kind of proves that Kanan had to be around to know where the bullet hole was at. So for me to say that he was in that he was in jail first, and then they killed Breeze, it doesn't make sense that that he would know exactly where the bullet hole was because he was in jail, right? If if, if my theory is correct, right? right. Um. You know, then he must. So therefore, he must have been involved. So I guess instead of so maybe he yes maybe okay so that's what happened. So now they're I guess they're insinuating that, Go Kanan used Ghost and Tommy to kill Breeze because Breeze wouldn't see them two coming, as opposed to Kanan. Mm -hmm. So then those three got promoted, if you will, and then because Tommy doesn't know yet i think oh he knows by now that tasha that the ghost worked with tasha to get Kanan out the way and then they and then that's when they were in charge of the business i see you doing your hand you're trying to do the math i was doing the math wrong so that wouldn't make sense though because ghost kill breeze he said at 16 because he was like i was your age when i killed breeze or he said that remember he was talking to Tariq. That, that last episode before Tariq was like, I'm going to kill him, right? Yeah. He was like, I was your age. I I, got, I, got, I didn't realize he gave age. I didn't yeah, he said, I was your age when I uh, had to kill Breeze or whatever. Okay. So if he was 16 doing this, then Kanan couldn't have been in prison at that point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, 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 quickly, so quickly after Angie left, uh, Andrew leaves, so therefore, Kanan used Ghost and Tommy to kill Breeze because Breeze did the same thing every day, as, as we'll find out later. Um, what type of drug dealer has a routine? Huh? What type of drug dealer has a routine? Like you come home, you watch Jeopardy. You, <laughs> well, everybody you has grease your scalp. Like you grease your scalp. Like I don't know. Like I, oh. I mean, people have lives. I mean, you got to be. I mean, once you come home, you can't be just change up how you eat and what you watch. You know, but I, but it's interesting how. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about when he, when he, when Kanan brings all this stuff up um, as he's talking to uh, Tariq. But um, anyway, it, it, just, it just since since we saw the apartment and he knew exactly where the bullet hole was, he must have somehow been directly involved with killing Breeze. Um, and since Ghost and Tommy are the ones that did it, so that must have been how they how they set it up. Um, and that's why uh, Kanan is going to give Ghost a history lesson um, in, in that sense. Um, he just should have just killed him. Kill a ghost? Tariq. Yeah. You said kill Tariq? <laughs> an eye for an eye? I kill you. You make me kill my son, so then I kill your son. 
There you go. He was about to, and I love, I love that. Anyway, we'll talk about when the episode comes. Uh, but I, I, I thought, I thought, I thought it was a very, very good episode. Um, I'm waiting for Dre to take uh the kids to school because then Tasha's a completely unnecessary parent. Um, at that point, I'm like, damn. That's why she's a witness protection because you can't even take care of your own damn kid. I like Shad. She's like, I will leave your ass here. <laughs> Just talk about that little girl. Oh man, it's real fucked up. Uh, anyway, uh, anything else for this episode? Nope. All right, then, then we will see each other uh, next week uh, for the next episode. Uh, anyway, guys, if you're still watching this video, thank you. Uh, got a little choppy there, uh, but uh, you know we have to think about some things, make sure we captured everything in a succinct manner. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel. We're doing very well. We're starting to come up. We're almost about to hit 600 subscribers. Uh, awesome. We're going for a thousand. That's the goal. So let's help us get there. So uh, again, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Everyone, please like on the video, comment on the video. Importantly, share the video, become a subscriber, help us make a subscriber. If you enjoy our content, help us find other people that would enjoy our content so you can discuss it together, you know, um, as, as we try to make this a family channel, uh, despite the swearing and other things that I do. Um, family don't mean kids. Family just means togetherness. That's what I'm saying. Um, either way, I digress. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> we appreciate that. Um, as always, as Jerry Springer always says, take care of yourselves and each other. And we got a lot more videos coming. We got a lot of new stuff coming. We got uh, all the Queen's men coming. We got a video coming for that. Uh, we got, yeah, it's, it's some foolishness, but uh, Stacey and I are going to talk about it tomorrow. Um, we got some Marvel stuff coming. There's some black stuff in there. Um, we got uh, Snowfall. As always, Ruthless, uh, we got that. Vim, Vim is coming in April. You want to review that? Uh, we, we look at that. That's going to be kind of interesting. Um, maybe some other shows we might throw on here, uh, depending on our schedule. Um, you some of you guys uh, uh, gave some uh, suggestions. I'll talk to Stacey about it uh, uh, and see if we can add those to, to the list. But anyway, uh, Family Business, we'll have a video on Family Business and some of the casting on that. Um, so they got some new uh, cast members uh, you, you may be familiar with. Uh, anyway, till next time. Where's that? There it is. <laughs>